All right, y'all, we need to talk. Okay, so if you read my title, you know I am talking about RV etiquette. It's those unspoken rules that uh, nobody ever tells you when you get started camping. You just kind of learn them through trial and error. You know, you learn them because you've broken these rules or maybe someone has broken the rules and has affected your camping experience. Nobody ever tells you these things because guess what? Nobody likes rules. Who likes rules? I don't like to be told what to do and I don't like to tell other people what to do. Well, wait a minute now. I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a business owner. Okay, so I, I have to tell some people what to do, okay? But not y'all, that's different. Not y'all, I don't wanna tell you what to do. Who likes that? So, you know, but there are some things that you should know when you're camping or when you're RVing that will help make the experience pleasurable for everybody around you. It's kind of like when you have a neighbor in a neighborhood that maybe doesn't keep up their property. You know, they got crap in the yard, the grass is grown up, and uh, the house is looking run down. Who wants to see that? It reflects bad on the neighborhood. And if you live right beside a neighbor like that, that's even worse. Who wants that? So, you know, these etiquette rules are really just about being decent. Just being decent. And it's important that you know these because sometimes you may find yourself in a campground and you've been there a couple of days, but you notice people aren't uh, speaking to you. Maybe they're giving you the side eye or something like that. A lot of times when we're in campgrounds, we start to think, well, you know, what's up with that? Why are they looking at me like that? You know, and we start to think, we get ideas and reasons in our head as to why this is happening. And it may not even be what you think. It may be because you have broken some of these etiquette rules and you have affected some others camping experience. So we want to fix that. And I just thought, who better to talk about RV etiquette than the woman who taught me, my mom, Dr. B. So mama, I was doing a video on RV etiquette. You know, like the things that people just don't tell you, you kind of, it's like the unspoken rules that you find out along the way. And I just mm -hmm. thought it was important since a lot of the people on uh, my channel have been commenting that they are new to RVing. And I remember when I first started, there was a lot of things I didn't know. In fact, a lot of this, these etiquette things, I learned from you. So I just thought, well, who better than to just go ahead and call you and uh, do this Zoom so that we can talk about RV etiquette and just kind of share some knowledge. You know, a lot of times when you're RVing, and you know, I've been RVing since the 90s, since 90, 1990. So been camping prior to that. You know, we had the tent and we go out and we did the tent thing and then we, uh, well, actually the band thing and then the tent thing and then you go into two or three different tents. You know, people think when you're RVing that um, you just all of a sudden decide to go buy an RV. Occasionally people are doing it, especially now. But when they get it, then they don't know what to do with it. They think, oh, it looks like it's fun, but it's a lot of work. You got, I tell people, you have to have RV in your spirit. Yes, it's spirit. a thing that drives you. Because if you don't, you will buy an RV and you'll go on two or three trips and then you want to sell it. And that's why you see so many people stuck with an RV because they look in that, or it looks like it might be fun and they don't really know if they like the camp, you know, and all the work that has to go with it. But now coming back to what you're saying is that I tell people that you, when you get to the campsite and the reason I went back to how we got started is because a lot of times we're riding along and just pulling the campsite, you know, you know, to just look on your map and you got the uh, different KOAs or different campsites that you're going uh, to, and you just pull and pay for the night because you're going someplace else on a long journey. But you have to read the rules at every site. You can't assume what you did at the site you stayed at the last time that you can do the same thing at this site. 
every site is different. So when they give you those packages, don't just throw them on the counter mm -hmm. and go about your business. The most time people look for, how can I get some um, internet? Or is there any kind of phone connection? Those are the two things that they look for. And the main thing is the sewer and the electric. We get that done, we're good. Don't read the rest of the stuff. Right. And they tell you when you're supposed to move out, when you're supposed to do all these things, but you have to read those instructions so you will know what the game is for their site. Some people have 10 o'clock, some people have 11 o'clock quiet time, and you gotta play along with those rules. Right, right. And speaking of the quiet hours, you mentioned, you know, there's different times. It could be 10 o'clock. It could be 9 o'clock. So you do yeah. need to know what time the quiet hours start. And then you also just need to be mindful that you're not just quiet, but I like to say dark as well. You know, turn your lights off, especially if you're camping in a um, quiet campsite with other people now if you're boondocking and there's nobody around you then you can you know leave your lights on do whatever you want to do but if there are people uh, around you and you're in a campsite and it's you know you don't really need to leave your lights on at your rv or at your campsite all night long you should turn those off so that you won't be make sure that your lights are not shining into someone else's tent or someone else's rv so those are not definitely that. something that we need to be mindful of. There's nothing worse to be in your place, sitting back, relaxing, and somebody got the lights on shining through your windows. You know what I mean? You know, you want to go and say, please, but because it's such a community, you don't want to offend people because you know they don't, most people don't mean to offend you. And those right. lights, they just not conscious of it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So you, you so, sit no. there and you, and, you, and you wait on them to turn the lights off. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. And then another thing too during quiet hours is we just need to be mindful that, you know, smells, you know, you don't want to be outside trying to cook anything after quiet hours. You know, if you miss dinner time and, and you know, you just don't want to go out there lighting up a grill, throwing out your steak or shrimp or whatever on your grill because it may smell good to you. But at nighttime when people are trying to rest, they may have their windows open, they're trying to get some sleep. They really don't want to smell you cooking your food after the quiet hours. So those are definitely things you don't want to do during quiet hours. And quiet hours to me is a time when you can just sit back and breathe. You know, when you're in your lounge chair and you're just sitting and listening to the crickets and, you know, the, the nature, the sounds of nature, that's what quiet hour means. Just that's what, that's what it's all about, getting somewhere, right. setting up in time so you can just sit back and just listen to nature. Exactly. Yeah. That brings me to another thing when you just said the word setup. Uh -huh. Also, we need to make sure that if you arrive at a campsite or um, after quiet hours, if it's nighttime, do not do a full setup at night. Yes. Just maybe just hook up to the electricity and wait till in the morning to start doing all of your foot, your setup, because you're gonna make a lot of noise and you may disturb campers who have already, you know, settled in for the evening. It's just not the appropriate time. If you arrive uh, after the quiet hours, then like I said, just just pull in, do the minimum. If you have a tent or whatever this you, you're camping with, do the minimum and then finish your setup in the morning. And same thing if you're leaving early. Yeah. Don't leave early, like four or five o'clock in the morning. You got your engine running, you know, you making a lot of noise with your bays and different things like that, putting stuff up. Make sure that you do that the night before. So then that way you can do a quiet exit out of the park if you're leaving early. Yeah, early night to yeah. do it early night. And, and the thing about it is too, Angie, you know, when we're talking about doing it in the mornings, if you're leaving, you still got to be mindful because people coming out and they're fixing breakfast and they're sitting yeah. down. You don't want to go set up your sore right that time because the wind is blowing yeah. and they're over there cooking. So you, it's, it's always about being mindful. Wait till everybody settle down. Or I usually, one of my tips is that I take out the Lysol and um, then I have this uh, spray that I use, like a, a deodorizer. I spray my area around the um connection for the sewer 
Just take your Lysol, spray around that, and spray the area. So when you hook up and you're in your cords, your cords, hopefully you clean your cords before you put them up and spray them with Lysol so they wouldn't have a smell. Then you are killing when you open that lid up to connect the sewer. Then you are spray in there. That's going to cut down the smell and give you time to hook it up quick without scent flying all over the place. You mean you you mean the hoses that you yes. spray down your hoses? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I'm saying when you get ready, you saying get up in the morning mm -hmm. and if you leave it, you know, set up your your sewer that you came in late last night. So you set up your sewer first thing in the morning mm -hmm. to make sure that that wind the wind doesn't blow that scent from the sewer gotcha. because people are having breakfast. Some people gotcha. get up early, six o'clock. So right. spray with some Lysol or some kind of deodorizing spray um, around the opening of the sewer. Okay. And then that way, when you line everything up and then when you pop it open to put it on, then you only have a few seconds, but no scent is gonna come out because you've already sprayed inside of it. Does that make yeah. sense? That does, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that we're, we're talking about is, you know, when we're coming in talking about, uh, when you pull into your site, what a lot of times people don't realize is that it's a lease ownership. Mm. You are in that spot. They give you a spot, they give you a number, and they say, this is your spot, and you pay for three days. So that means you are leasing that spot, that eight by 10 by whatever. I have a 40 foot diesel pusher, so that's a long spot there, but I own that whole spot for three days. Exactly. No one can come and Take me off of that spot if I'm doing all that I'm supposed to do in the rules and no one should be able to trespass on my spot or do things to make me uncomfortable on my spot. It's just mm -hmm. like leasing an apartment or leasing uh, a car, whatever, it's yours. You own it for that time now. And sometimes people don't realize you just don't walk across somebody else's lawn because that's their property at the moment. It's a temporary ownership. Yeah. That is, that is definitely something that people need to be mindful, mindful about. Like if you're taking, for example, if you're going to one of the public spaces, you know, and, and it seems quicker to cut through someone's sight, you just don't want to do that. Go ahead and walk the long way, take the long route. Don't ever cut through people's campsite. And then also children. You know, if you're camping with children, you know, we have to be mindful when I have my grandson to make sure that he's not running through people's campsite. You know how he likes to take off. <laughs> so I tell you, that's what happened to me the last time we was camping and I was behind Connor and was playing running and he can run. I don't understand how he runs so fast. He took off running and he had his sight on this man's um, uh, property. He saw him sitting out there and he and they had a little bike out there and stuff. He he was cited to go on that property and I was running as fast as I could and couldn't catch up with it, almost tripped and fell because I was trying to kid and I got to him just before he got to, you know, own the property to get to that bike. I said, no, we can't go. And I was trying to explain to him that's somebody else's property. Yes. You yes. know, you don't understand that. I want to go play with that over there. <laughs> that was <laughs> and he is quick. So that is definitely quick. something quick. we need to be mindful about. <laughs> well, the other thing I, that we uh, I want to talk to you about is to um, talk about your, your, when we talk about your property, I remember one time I was on a, on a campsite, you know, and I was sitting there and I'd been there for a few days and this couple came in and they had five little poodles. And, you know, it's okay with the dogs. I don't have a problem with the dogs. But what they did was, you know, my on the right is your front yard. Mm -hmm. On the left is your backyard. So what they did, but you have to be mindful because my front yard is your backyard. So right. Don't put all of your junk out there. I got to sit and see or uh, anything that's going to be uh, giving off an order. She came out and put a little fence, which was really on my property, and put her five little dogs there. Five. So five. And the little puppy was in there. They're barking and carrying on. So I can't sit out and read a book. I can't sit the poop and everything's going on. And I had to really, you know, nicely say to her, uh, if you don't mind, can you move them to the other side? Because, you know, I, I'm just trying to get some rest over here and they're just barking and carrying on. And they're on the inside like it's nothing, you know, because, you know, to them, it's their baby. And to their babies, you know, they're just fine. 
And she said, oh, I didn't think about it. But that's something you have to think about. You have to kind of govern and make sure you guide your front and, and watch your back because right. your back is somebody else's front door. That's right. That's key. I like that. Your, your backyard is someone else's front yard when you're in a right. That's right. That's true. Um, another thing is, and I know I'm probably going to get probably going to get some hate on this, but it's the truth. And it is uh, Don't say it. <laughs> I, I got to say it. Come it on with is it. cigarette and cigar smoke. Uh -huh. You know, Folks need to be mindful of cigar and cigarette smoke. It is definitely something that is, you know, campers really who do not smoke really are offended by cigarette and cigar smoke. So if you're in a campsite and you have people, the magic number is 100 feet. So if you have people within 100 feet of your campsite, then you really should be mindful of your cigarette and your cigar, especially cigar smoke, because it travels and smells so bad. But just, you know, be mindful of that. Because again, there's nothing worse than you being inside your RV or your tent, and you've got the windows open trying to enjoy nature, and here's someone else's cigarette and cigar smoke come traveling through your, your RV. That is just, it, it's very disrespectful. So we just need to make sure that we're very mindful that we are not, um, you know, offending people with cigar and cigarette smoke. Cause you know, they may not, they may be like me, just don't, don't really like the smell of smoke. Yeah. And, and the good thing about that is take a walk. Yeah. You want to smoke, take a walk. Yeah. Take a walk. And, and most people realize that old RVers like me, see, there's a, there's some standards that, you know, back in the day, Things are still, we're still mixed in with the new. So we got the newcomers and they're doing a little difference. Now, you know, they just do what they do. Um, they don't have those, some of them don't have those principles of the old standards back in the day. And I used to say, if everyone was like RVers, right. the world would be a better place mm -hmm. because you didn't meet a stranger and they were always there to help you when, if you, like I told you, if you pull your hood up, 10 people are gonna come. What's up, what's happening? What can we help you do? It's that kind of community. And it's still in the midst of the newcomers. We just gotta do, I guess, a show like this to kind of help them understand these are the things that you do. And of course, you are a new RVer yourself. I am so excitedly proud of the fact that you like RVs because that it just gives us another bonding um, thing that we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're passionate about it. And that's what I like. I'm just like, she is passionate. I never thought I'd see the day. But anyway, <laughs> long story short, we were talking another thing. Another, another thing is understanding, like when you stay in that places, in what you call boondocking at Walmart, and you know, some of the, you know, uh, uh, you got Walmart, you got Target, you got, uh, huh? Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel. Yeah, and then Publix and things like that. You know, some of them are cutting down on it because people are actually uh, deciding to live there when it's just there for you to take a rest. Right. Um, it's there for you to stop, go into Walmart, pick up some stuff. That's the, the, the driven force behind it, is that you're going to pull up the Walmart, go in there and shop, come back, you can sit, cook a meal, you can lay back, relax, take a nap, but they don't want you to stay overnight in the next day too. Right. So sometimes people abuse that. And rest stops, you don't have to worry about it because that's what it's for. Right. You don't have to worry about somebody calling you at Walmart saying you stayed too long. You can stay at the rest stop for 24 hours if you want. Nobody's going to say anything because it's up to you how long okay. you want to rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then another thing to, you know, talking about Walmart, of course, we, we do know we're seeing increasingly more and more our um, Walmarts are not allowing our beers to to park in their parking lots anymore because they are abusing it. But, uh, you know, when you get there, you don't want to pull out your slide, open up your awning, take your chairs out, you know, and, you know, God forbid, please don't pull out the grill, you know, just whatever you do, just stay inside, you know, just, Go ahead, if you cook your meal, cook your meal inside, lay down, get you some rest. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you can get up and, and leave when, when you're in the morning or whenever you, you decide to leave. But it's just important that you understand you're just there temporarily. You don't want to set up camp inside a parking lot. And you also want to make sure that you're in the back of the parking lot. 
you know, you're not interfering yeah. with the uh, shop. Well, the parking, you can. That's what you do. But I'm going to tell you a story. One time we was at Walmart and we watched this RV pulled up and they parked and everything looked normal. And they went in uh, Walmart and they came back. And then all of a sudden they set some chairs on that side and they invited some family and friends to come over. <laughs> oh <laughs> they, my goodness. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> they, they invite family and friends. And I'm thinking, really? They, well, we're passing through uh, your city. Okay, we'll meet us at the Walmart. And they sat on the outside and just opened up the order and just had them a good old hangout time. And I'm thinking, wow, that's abusing the privilege. And that's what's gotten to the point now where Walmart is like, no, we are not your site that you pay to stay on. You know what I'm saying? You just, you here to take a nap or a rest for a moment and keep it moving. Absolutely. So, yeah, y'all, family, please, y'all don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. So then, then another thing um, that I learned, I guess not from experience, but just from other RVers, this is one that really it apparently is a hot button with a lot of uh, people in campsites. You don't ever want to go and knock on someone's door. And I actually, I don't knock on anybody's door, but apparently that is a hot button. Yeah. And I thought about it. I said, well, I guess if someone did knock on my door, number one, you knock on my door. I'm not really opening the door if I don't know who you are. That's number one. But number two, it's very hard to see people when they um, come and knock on your door. That's, that's the first thing. And then when, you, when they do knock on your door, if you do open the door, you pretty much are exposed to whoever's on the other side of that door. They can see all inside your RV. You know, so um, the best thing, the rule is, if you want to see somebody or talk to somebody, you wait until they come outside. Right. And then, you know, don't walk them in their campsite, you know, just, just kind of talk to them from the street or from your, your campsite, talk to them from far, from afar and without approaching them right. and, and knocking on their door. Well, see, the, the thing that, uh, you know, say, for instance, when we were out camping and, you know, the, the people that we met when we was there before and then we came back and we didn't see them when we was getting ready to leave and I didn't want to leave without saying something to them. I went, I knocked on their door, but I backed up so that when they look out their front window, they could see who I was. Don't just stand at the door, especially now. So when I knocked on the door, I backed up so when they looked out, they saw who I was in, pl in plain sight. That, if you have to, if it's an emergency and you have to do it, but just general conversation, no, you don't do it. You know? Right. So yeah. we'd have to have some, some type, type of reason for that. Yeah. And it's like, if you've been in a camp, uh, site, campground for a few days and you've made friends, you know, it, it might be a little variation to that rule, you know. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's really a no-no. People don't, don't appreciate you doing that. So you don't ever want to want to knock on the door. Just wait till they come out. But the one tip that I would give, <clears throat> if I had to give something that I think is dear to my heart, it would be the fact that campers are really nice people. And they all have the same mission. I just want to get away. I want to relax. You know, be free. I, I just want to be free into nature. And I like that. And I'm a talker. So I like people when I go down there and I'm like, hi, how you doing? And speaking. And, you know, they speak back and then you got a conversation. You get to know people from around the world. And that to me is the highlight is meeting people. You know, I know that's not your thing, but you get that. You get you say it's not your thing, but you talk the most. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yes, you do. You, you stand up there and you talk. Now, the couple that y'all met, you fella, you know, and when y'all was camping, y'all became friends. So you meet some wonderful people. Yeah, you do. You I, do. I met some you really, meet some wonderful really people. people. Yeah. 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 I love it. I love it. So, anything else we need to share? Well, along that lines about, you know, people being friendly, I think a lot of times, especially people who are new to RV being and really new to the community, 
they don't realize uh, they may take that friendliness as something else. Like they may think they're being people are being nosy. You know, they're coming over looking at my rig or they're looking at my tent or whatever your setup is. You know, wh why are they over here talking to me and asking me questions? You know, and it's really they're just being friendly most of the time. And it's not anything to be offended by. It really is just people. That's their way. Um, they watch you when you come in. You know, a lot of times you're in entertainment when you pull up to set up your RV in a campsite, people are sitting around and you're probably going to have about five eyes, five people's uh, eyes on you. Everybody at the park watching you set up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what we do. That's what, that's that's what we do. On. We're checking you out. We want to see who you are. So, you know, let me look at them, see how they're setting up. You know, me traveling by myself, I'm entertainment number one. I, first of all, I'm a black female. And then I'm driving a 40 foot diesel pusher and they don't see no man with me. And then I get out and I'm sitting up, I'm pulling up. I am entertainment number one. When they see me coming <laughs> in with this hair, <laughs> this hair driving into the park, uh, they go, okay, there gotta be a man in there somewhere. There's no man. I get out, I'm on what they are. What I can feel the eyes watching me set up. Well, she knows what she's doing, you know, yeah. kind of a thing. But to me, that's what we do. But I want to say something from the old, for the old campers, you know, the old RVers. That's what we did. We walk up and we talk to people. Say, oh man, I like your rig. Can I see it on the inside? Then come on in. That's what we did. Not the newcomers are, you know, they want to be. Nah, I don't want you to see what I have. But we did that. It was nothing. If I, you know, we walk along and see a rig and we say, oh man, look at that. So yeah. it's entertainment in itself. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's important for the people who are new to RVing just to understand that, you know, folks are not getting in your business and not being nosy. They really are genuinely just a, a community that looks out for one another. They're there to help. You'd be surprised how many times you may have a problem with your rig and somebody in that part can either they've had that same problem, they know about RVs that can come and help you and save you some money, you know, so it, it's valuable to be able to yeah. have a community when you're out yeah. RVing. Oh, it has saved us a lot of money. Somebody come and this is something simple, especially when you're new and you don't know, something just popped off or you need to do this or do that, you learn. That's how you learn. You learn to RV by going RVing. Right. You can't learn it on the on on the lot when you buy the RV. You can't learn it from the books. Right. You know, um, one, one tip I will give is that I have a checkoff sheet, and I put it on the clipboard, and all the things that we need to check off. My husband had a side of things that he needed to do, and I had a side of things that I needed to do, so that we wouldn't forget. Because when we first got RV and we run down the street, the the um, the step is out. The antennas up, you know, everybody thinking somebody else checking, somebody else right. checking, people blowing and hollering and trying to tell you, you don't know what they're saying, you pull over, exactly. you see these things. So the checklist, before you pull out, that's the key thing for any RVer. Before you leave, you got to check. You cannot be in a hurry. If you're in a hurry, you're going to end up spending $500 to $2,000 because you missed something. Your levelers wasn't up or something wasn't you didn't unplug your electric and pull the electric off the wall. You know, you have to be careful and make sure that you check step by step, go around, check all your bays. It's an inspection before you pull out. Exactly. And that's what we've learned to do. I generally take care of the things inside the RV. My husband takes care of the things on the outside of the RV. And then we even double check each other. Like he'll say, you know, did you do this? And I'll say, did you do that? You know, we just kind of, you know, double check and make sure. It's, it's nothing wrong with checking and rechecking just to make sure that you don't have those type of issues where you forgot something that's going to cost you thousands of dollars. I mean, yeah, leaving the electric plugged up and you driving off, I mean, that's so easy to do. And that is a very expensive mistake. One more, one more etiquette thing um, that I think is important is learn how to clean your hoses you know there is nothing worse than to see somebody with a sewer hose 
using the clean water faucet or what do you call it spigot or what what is that thing i said yeah faucet okay so using the clean water faucet to clean your hose yeah please don't do that please don't do that that is so disgusting or taking their sewer hose and throwing it up on the picnic table you know people are going to come behind you and it's just disgusting so you need to make sure when you're RVing that you learn the proper techniques to clean your sewer hose and that would be you empty out and mama you tell me if i'm right you empty out the black tank first then you come behind it with the gray tank and then my husband uses some disinfectant um after that uh to go through the holes is that is that the right procedure do i have it right yeah 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 because some people what they'll do now you're talking about the hose they'll take the hose when they finish and then they'll take it to the spricket uh to the faucet <laughs> we get these words mixed up here and hold the hose up under that to wash yeah. that. um, that. that's why when they come in, <laughs> yeah, before i put anything onto that faucet before i hook up to the water i spray it i clean it and lysol it lysol it because yeah i don't know who's been handling it and how it was done prior to so sometimes people get in a hurry and they're not thinking they just say hey i'm just doing me and you, you know whoever come behind me do them that's yeah that that's a good practice to always clean uh the clean water faucet before you hook your hose up to it because yeah. not only could there be some nasty RVers or campers out there doing some nasty things but also uh there's been animals you know they see fresh water dripping from the um faucet they'll come and lick on it and stuff like that so you just definitely want to make sure that you spray it down with some disinfectant before you hook up your your hose that's a good thing to do so uh, so yeah that, and, that's have a, and have a hose for cleaning different things and then have a fresh water hose you got to have two i have my white fresh water hose it's my white hose mm -hmm. and then my one that i do anything else with is my green hose you gotta have two. Some people want to use one. You need two, gotcha. so you can distinguish which one is which. Gotcha, gotcha. Good tips. Yeah. So this has been good. Thank you, Mama. I appreciate you sharing oh, you your knowledge. I'm sure that the um, YouTubers watching appreciate it too. Yeah, RV is. You know, you're talking about RV and with soul. I, it, it is my soul. It is what I love and. And right now, I really want to do something that you don't want me to do. And I want to just go and get me a piece of land and just actually live in my RV full time like I did some time ago. And um, maybe you'll get hip on that. We'll see. <laughs>